Raxa and Clytus glared at Earth rotating below their Klingon shuttle, a primitive blue marble that was humanity's only home, and the alien women's personal hell for the foreseeable future. Little did they know that on humanity's chaotic homeworld, they would find something completely unexpected amidst the inferior species they so despised. Love. The two Klingon females had fought tooth and nail to avoid this demeaning assignment. Raxa had threatened to resign her commission. Clytus had appealed to her powerful father on the High Council to intervene. But in the end, the Empire always got its way. The Klingon-Romulan War had dragged on for years, draining the Empire's resources and resolve. Klingon fleets lay shattered, colonies burned, supplies dwindled. If the tide didn't turn soon, the unthinkable could happen. The Klingon Empire, undefeated for 10,000 years, might actually lose. In desperation, Klingon leadership turned to an unlikely potential savior. Humans, technologically inferior, disorganized, ruled by chaotic passions instead of logic, humans were everything Klingons despised in a species. But human innovation and unpredictability had become almost legendary. They had a penchant for technological leaps that seemed to defy convention. And right now, even a slight edge could make the difference between victory and destruction for the Klingon Empire. So Raxa and Clytus descended into the human megacity called New York, a seething, stinking anthill, packed with nine million of the loathsome creatures. The Klingons hated everything about Earth, from the cacophonous cities to the putrid food to the illogical, overly emotional inhabitants. Their every instinct told them to conquer this world, not negotiate with it. But here they were, about to grovel before human officials for aid. The very thought made them sick. At that moment, a smiling human male approached them on the chaotic street, his hand extended in greeting. You two look lost, he said warmly. Welcome to Earth. I'm Eric. Can I help you find your way? The Klingon stared at him in revulsion and shock, a male speaking to them unasked. No Klingon male would dare such impropriety. They almost attacked him on sheer instinct. But something about the human's kind eyes and easy smile gave them pause. There was a sincerity and gentleness in his manner that was utterly alien to the Klingons, and strangely captivating. Little did Raxa and Clytus realize that the insufferably charming human named Eric would soon alter the course of their lives and the future of the galaxy forever. Clytus tapped the controls to shut off the viewscreen, leaving the small shuttle in eerie silence. Raxa gripped the edge of her bunk, claws digging into the metal. The fate of the Empire, of their very species, hung in the balance, and the key to salvation lay in the hands of the unlikeliest of creatures, humans. We will do what we must, Raxa growled, her voice hard as geranium. For the Empire. Clytus nodded grimly, for the Empire. Sleep eluded them that night, as visions of burning Klingon ships and fallen warriors haunted their dreams. At dawn's first light, Raxa and Clytus emerged from their shuttle to find Eric already waiting, two steaming cups in hand. The inviting aroma of a human beverage called coffee wafted through the air. Thought you could use a pick-me-up before the big talks today, Eric said brightly, pressing the warm cups into their hands. Araxa stared down at the murky liquid, watching the steam curl and dance. Such a simple gesture, yet it tied her stomach in knots. How could they look this human in the eye, accept his generosity and friendship, all while plotting to deceive him and his people? As they walked, Eric animatedly pointed out the sights, towering skyscrapers that seemed to defy gravity, sleek vehicles that darted through the air, grand temples of commerce and culture. Everywhere Raxa looked, she saw ingenuity and persistence, a species clawing its way to the stars through sheer stubborn will. Despite herself, a grudging respect kindled in her hearts. Humans were more than they appeared, innovative, adaptable, indomitable. In another reality, Perhaps Klingons and humans would be not enemies, but allies. All too soon, the trio arrived at the UN complex. Eric flashed them an encouraging smile. I have a good feeling about today. I think this could be the start of something great for both our peoples. 
I'll be here waiting to celebrate with you after. With that he strode off, leaving Raxa and Clytus alone to face the human diplomats and their own consciences. In the cavernous assembly hall, the negotiations dragged on for hours. Raxa and Clytus probed for weaknesses, seeking an opening to press for the technology they needed. But the humans proved shrewd negotiators, offering tantalizing glimpses of technological marvels while skirting specifics. As the talks foundered, Raxa's mind wandered to Eric's sister and her gift. The simple woven bracelet somehow felt heavy on her wrist, a tangible reminder of the choice they faced. Betray a friend to save their people, or risk everything for the sake of honor? The weight of a thousand generations seemed to press down on Raxa as she struggled with the impossible choice. She caught Clytus's eye and saw the same conflict etched in her features. In that moment, Raxa knew there was only one path they could walk. The Klingon Empire would weather this storm as it always had, with honor and courage, not deception and treachery. She turned to the human delegation, steel in her spine and fire in her eyes. We have a proposal, she declared in a voice that rang through the chamber, a new alliance to face the future together, one built on trust and mutual respect. You don't understand, Clytus growled. Without these components, the Klingon Empire falls, billions will die. The lead human negotiator shook his head. We can't in good conscience provide weapons of mass destruction. The risks are too great. Clytus slammed her fist on the table, causing several humans to flinch. Then you condemn us all. She stormed out of the room, shoving past a startled Eric in the hallway. Clytus, wait, Eric called, jogging after her. What happened? She whirled on him, teeth bared. Your people do mine with their cowardice. We came seeking aid, and you offer nothing but empty platitudes while Klingons die. Eric held up his hands. We want to help, truly. But escalating the conflict will only lead to more death on all sides. There has to be another way. Araxa emerged from the conference room, catching the tail end of their exchange. She studied Eric's earnest expression, noting the lack of fear or disgust in his eyes, despite Clytus's outburst. Clytus, Raxa said softly, perhaps we were too hasty. The human's caution comes not from malice, but from a desire to prevent further bloodshed. Clytus's shoulders slumped. Then what hope is there for our people? Raxa squared her shoulders and marched back into the conference room, Clytus and Eric trailing behind. She faced the human delegation, chin held high. Esteemed representatives of Earth, Raxa began, her voice steady. I stand before you not as a conqueror or an enemy, but as one who seeks mutual understanding. The Romulan threat looms over us all. United, we have a chance to end this war and usher in an era of peace. Divided, we fall. The humans murmured among themselves, considering her words. After what felt like an eternity, the lead negotiator nodded. We propose a compromise, he said. We'll provide the components, but a human peacekeeping force must accompany the delivery to ensure the weapon is used only for defense. In the days that followed, Eric threw himself into learning Klingon combat techniques. Raxa watched with growing admiration as he mastered moves that had taken her years to perfect. Hyota quick study, Raxa said as Eric executed a flawless disarming maneuver. Their eyes met, and Raxa felt an unfamiliar warmth spread through her chest. That night, as the stars shone over New York, Raxa and Eric's hands intertwined. No words were needed as their lips met in a kiss that bridged worlds. Dawn broke, and the mission began. The Klingon ship cut through space, its precious cargo secured. Eric stood on the bridge beside Raxa and Clytus, his presence a comfort in the face of uncertainty. Alarms blared. Romulan ships filled the viewscreen, weapons charged. Evasive maneuvers, Clytus shouted. The ship rocked as Romulan fire found its mark. Consoles exploded in showers of sparks. A blinding flash lit up space. A ship unlike any they'd seen before emerged from a spatial rift. It dwarfed even the largest Romulan vessel. What is that? Eric breathed. The alien ship's weapon ports glowed with building energy. 
Raxor pulled Eric close, determined to face whatever came next together. Brace for impact, Clytus yelled as the alien weapon reached full power. Raxor closed her eyes, feeling Eric's arms tighten around her. Whatever happened next would change the course of the galaxy forever. A blinding flash erupted from the alien vessel's weapon ports. Raxor instinctively shielded Eric with her body, bracing for annihilation, but instead of searing energy, a colossal swirling vortex materialized before them. Eric's jaw dropped. What in the... From the shimmering portal burst a fleet of sleek human ships, their hulls gleaming. Raxa counted at least fifty vessels, each jam packed with weaponry unlike anything she'd ever seen. Impossible, Clytus breathed. The human armada swiftly encircled the alien craft. A booming voice echoed through the comms. This is Admiral Jacob Reynolds of the United Earth Defense Force. Power down your weapons and identify yourself immediately. Ten seconds ticked by. The alien ship's energy weapon dimmed, then flickered out entirely. They're standing down, Eric said in disbelief. With the alien threat neutralized, Reynolds' fleet turned to face the approaching Romulan warbirds. Space lit up with weapons fire as the battle was joined. Human phasers lanced out, carving through Romulan shields. Photon torpedoes detonated against enemy hulls. Despite being outnumbered, the human ships danced nimbly between disruptor blasts. Their superior maneuverability and firepower slowly tipped the scales. Amidst the chaos, a lone shuttle rocketed towards the crippled Klingon vessel. It weaved through debris and weapons fire, expertly piloted. With a metallic clang, it latched onto the airlock. The door hissed open, revealing a squad of armored marines. Their leader, a grizzled man with close-cropped hair, stepped forward. Captain James Hendricks, UEDF Special Operations. We're here for the weapon components. Before Raxa could respond, proximity alarms blared. Romulan boarding parties had breached the lower decks. Eric turned to the battered Klingon crew. With me, we hold this ship at all costs. He charged down the corridor, Klingon warriors at his heels. Raxa watched in amazement as Eric moved with fluid grace, his training evident in every motion. A Romulan soldier lunged at him with a dagger. Eric sidestepped, grabbed the attacker's wrist, and sent him flying into a bulkhead. Meanwhile, on the bridge of the human flagship, Admiral Reynolds watched the battle unfold on tactical displays. He nodded to his weapons officer. Target their command ship, full spread. A barrage of torpedoes streaked across space, followed by searing phaser beams. The Romulan flagship vanished in a fiery explosion. Seeing their leadership destroyed, the remaining Romulan vessels attempted to flee. But the human fleet's superior speed cut off every escape route. One by one, the Romulan ships fell to concentrated fire. Back on the Klingon vessel, Captain Hendricks's team fought their way to the cargo hold. They secured the weapon components just as the ship shuddered violently. We're losing structural integrity. Clytus shouted over the comms, Get out now! The Marines hustled Eric, Raxer, and Clytus into their shuttle moments before the Klingon ship erupted into a fireball. As the dust settled, the human fleet regrouped around the shuttle. Admiral Reynolds' flagship loomed before them, its hangar bay opening in invitation. Raxer, Clytus, and Eric stood rigidly as Admiral Reynolds approached, flanked by his senior staff, the Admiral's weathered face broke into a smile. Welcome aboard. I believe we have much to discuss. He led them to a conference room with a breathtaking view of the stars. Reynolds gestured to the shimmering vortex, still visible in the distance. That, my friends, is the future of space travel, an experimental subspace drive that can cross vast distances in the blink of an eye. Reynolds nodded. We detected the Romulan ambush and diverted our fleet. It seems we arrived just in time. He turned to Raxor and Clytus. I propose we escort you and the weapon components directly to your high command. This could be the beginning of a powerful alliance against our common enemy. Eric stepped forward. I volunteer to go as liaison, to help foster cooperation between our peoples. 
As the newly formed human Klingon fleet prepared to depart, Clytus found herself drawn to the shuttle bay. There, secured by tractor beams, floated the alien vessel that had started it all. She stared at its strange contours, a chill running down her spine. Something about this ship, about the beings who crewed it, felt profoundly wrong, as if their very presence heralded a shift in the universe's destiny. Clytus shook her head, trying to dispel the feeling, but deep in her warrior's heart she knew this was not nearly finished. The human Klingon fleet surged through space, a fragile alliance born of necessity. On the bridge of the flagship, Eric stood beside Raxa, their hands nearly touching as they gazed at the stars streaking past. Your people fight with honor, Raxa said, her voice low. Perhaps there is hope for cooperation after all. Eric nodded, a small smile playing at his lips. We're not so different when you get down to it, both willing to die for what we believe in. As the journey progressed, Eric worked tirelessly to bridge the divide between humans and Klingons. He organized joint training exercises, cultural exchanges, even a raucous drinking contest that ended with humans and Klingons singing arm in arm. But while Eric fostered unity, Clytus harbored growing suspicions. She paced the corridors restlessly, her eyes constantly drawn to the alien vessel secured in the cargo bay. One night, as the ship slumbered, Clytus slipped past the guards and into the cavernous hold. The alien craft loomed before her, its hull pulsing with an eerie blue light. Clytus ran her hand along its smooth surface, feeling an electric tingle. She found an access panel and pried it open, revealing a tangle of unfamiliar circuitry. As she probed deeper, a holographic display flickered to life. Alien text scrolled past, but Clytus recognized a familiar symbol, the crest of the Zarkalian Empire. Her blood ran cold. The Zarkalian were no mere legend, but a very real threat, and they were coming. Clytus burst into Raxa's quarters, her eyes wild. We've been deceived, the weapon, it's not safe. Raxa listened intently as Clytus laid out her discoveries. The pieces fell into place, painting a grim picture of impending doom. They moved swiftly, stunning the human guards outside the weapons vault. Raxa hefted the experimental device, its weight a grim reminder of its destructive potential. Eric rounded the corner, his eyes widening in shock. Raxa, what are you doing? I'm sorry, Eric, Raxa said, her voice heavy with regret, but I must protect my people. Eric stepped forward, hands raised. Please, let's talk about this. Whatever's happening, we can face it together. For a moment, Raxa wavered, but Clytus urged her on, and they pushed past Eric, racing for the shuttle bay. Admiral Reynolds' voice boomed over the intercom, demanding they stand down. But it was too late. The Klingon ship detached, speeding towards the border of Klingon space. On the bridge of the human flagship, Reynolds turned to Eric. I'm sorry, son, but we can't let them take that weapon. Eric stood tall, his voice firm. Then I'm going with them to make sure no one does anything rash. Reynolds nodded, understanding in his eyes. Godspeed. The Klingon ship touched down on a remote outpost, a fortress carved into the side of a desolate moon. General Rakakor greeted them, his armor gleaming in the harsh light. Well done, he said, reaching for the weapon. You've saved the Empire. But as Raxa handed over the device, Rakakor's face twisted into a cruel smile. He barked an order, and suddenly they were surrounded by armed guards. Rakakor laughed a cold alien sound. His features shimmered, revealing the true face of a Zarkalian infiltrator. Fools, you've delivered the key to your own destruction. Eric lunged forward, but a stun blast caught him in the chest. He crumpled to the ground as Rakakor's men dragged Raxa away. In the chaos, Clytus slipped away, her mind racing. She had to warn the others, had to stop this madness before it was too late. As she raced through the twisting corridors of the outpost, the full scope of the betrayal became clear. This was no mere invasion. It was the culmination of centuries of hatred, a plan to wipe the Klingon race from existence. Clytus clenched her fists, a fire burning in her chest. She would not let her people fall, not today, not ever. 
Clyta sprinted through the twisting corridors of the outpost, her boots pounding against the metal floor. Her heart raced as she searched for allies in this nest of traitors. She rounded a corner and skidded to a halt, faced with a squad of Klingon warriors. Halt! the lead warrior barked, raising his disruptor. Clytus raised her hand slowly. Brothers, listen to me. We've been betrayed. The Zarkelians have infiltrated our ranks. The warriors exchanged wary glances. Their leader stepped forward, his scarred face etched with suspicion. Prove it. Clytus took a deep breath and recited an ancient Klingon battle prayer. The words flowed from her lips, a testament to her unwavering loyalty. As she finished, the lead warrior's eyes widened in recognition. You speak truth, he growled. I am Korg, second to General Kavin. We've suspected treachery for some time. Relief washed over Clytus. Take me to Kivin. We must act now. Korg nodded and led her through a hidden passage. They emerged in a vast underground chamber where hundreds of Klingon warriors stood at attention. At their center stood General Kivin, a mountain of a Klingon with a mane of silver hair. Kevin's eyes locked onto Clytus. Speak. Clytus quickly relayed everything she had discovered about Rakakor and the Zarkalian plot. As she finished, a low growl rippled through the assembled warriors. Kevin raised his batleth high. Brothers, our empire stands on the brink. We attack now. Meanwhile, in a dimly lit cell, Eric hung from the ceiling by his wrists. His body was a canvas of bruises and cuts, testament to Rakor's brutal interrogation. The disguised Zarkalian circled him, a cruel smile twisting his stolen Klingon features. Activate the weapon, human, Rakakor hissed. End this futile resistance. Eric spat blood onto the floor. Go to hell. Rakakor snarled and pressed a pain stick against Eric's ribs. Electricity arced through Eric's body, every nerve screaming in agony. But still, he refused to break. Suddenly, alarms blared throughout the outpost. Rakakor whirled towards the door as the sounds of battle echoed down the corridor. In her cell, Raxor heard the commotion. She pressed herself against the wall, listening intently. The guard outside her door shouted in surprise, then went silent. The cell door slid open, revealing a grinning Klingon warrior. General Kavin sends his regards, he said, tossing Raxor a disruptor. Raxa caught the weapon and grinned. Then let's not keep him waiting. They charged into the fray. The corridors were chaos, filled with the clash of batleths and the shriek of disruptor fire. Raxa fought like a woman possessed, carving a path through the enemy towards Eric's cell. Kevin's forces pushed deeper into the outpost, their fierce Klingon battle cries striking fear into the hearts of the Zarkalian infiltrators. Clytus fought at Kevin's side, her blade singing as it tasted enemy blood. Back in the interrogation chamber, Rakakor grabbed Eric by the throat. It seems our time is cut short, human. He raised a wicked-looking dagger, its edge glinting in the harsh light. The door exploded inward. Raxa stood framed in the doorway, her disruptor leveled at Rakakor's head. Step away from him, she growled. Rakakor sneered and lunged at Eric with the dagger. Raxa fired the disruptor blast catching Rakakor square in the chest. The Zarkalian infiltrator's body hit the floor, his true alien form revealed in death. Raxa rushed to Eric, cutting him free. They embraced fiercely, both hardly daring to believe they were reunited. Raxa pressed her forehead against his. Never. Eric's mind raced. The weapon, we can't let them have it. There's a secure vault, Deep beneath the Klingon homeworld, Eric said, his voice urgent. If we can get the weapon there, it'll be safe. They sprinted from the cell, joining the flow of Kevin's warriors as they fought a fighting retreat. Eric scooped up the weapon components, securing them in a reinforced case. As they reached the outpost's shuttle bay, Kevin himself covered their escape. Go! he roared over the din of battle. We'll hold them here. Eric and Raxa boarded a small shuttle. As Eric fired up the engines, Raxa took one last look at the brave Klingons holding the line. Then they were away, streaking towards the Klingon homeworld with their precious, dangerous cargo. Eric's hands tightened on the controls. Hang on, this is going to get rough. 
The shuttle plunged into the Klingon atmosphere, fire licking at its hull as Eric pushed it to its limits. Behind them, Zarkalian fighters gave chase, energy beams lancing past them into the turbulent sky. They broke through the cloud cover, revealing a harsh landscape of jagged mountains and barren plains. Eric skimmed the shuttle low over the terrain, using every trick he knew to shake their pursuers. A lucky shot clipped their wing. The shuttle spun wildly, smoke trailing from the damaged engine. Eric fought the controls, guiding them towards a deep ravine. The shuttle slammed into the rocky ground, skidding to a stop at the ravine's edge. Eric and Raxa stumbled out, battered, but alive. In the distance, they could hear the whine of approaching Zarkalian engines. Raxa hefted the weapon case. We need to move now. They set off into the unforgiving Klingon wilderness, the first steps of a journey that would test them to their very limits. Behind them, the Zarkalian ships landed, disgorging hunting parties eager for the kill. The race was on, and failure meant the end of everything they held dear. Eric and Raxa plunged into the unforgiving Klingon wilderness, the weight of their mission heavy on their shoulders. Jagged rocks tore at their boots as they scrambled over treacherous terrain, the case containing the weapon components clutched tightly to Eric's chest. We need to find shelter, Raxa panted, scanning the desolate landscape. Night falls quickly here and the predators come out to hunt. As if on cue, a bone-chilling howl echoed across the barren plains. Eric's eyes widened. What the hell was that? They pressed on muscles burning as they climbed a steep incline. At the top, they paused to catch their breath. Eric wiped sweat from his brow, taking in the alien vista before them. Twin moons hung low in the blood-red sky, casting an eerie glow over the rugged terrain. A flicker of movement caught Eric's eye. He grabbed Raxa's arm, pointing to a ridge in the distance. There's Arcalian scouts. Raxa squinted, then cursed under her breath. Good eyes, we need to move now. They descended the hill, keeping low to avoid detection. The uneven ground made progress slow and treacherous. Eric's foot slipped on loose gravel, sending him tumbling. He clutched the weapon case to his chest as he rolled, protecting it with his body. Raxa helped him up, checking him for injuries. Are you all right? They pressed on through the night, exhaustion gnawing at their bones. As dawn broke, they stumbled upon the ruins of an ancient Klingon temple. Massive stone columns, worn by centuries of wind and sand, loomed before them. By Kales, Raxa breathed. I've heard stories of places like this, but I never thought... They entered the crumbling structure, grateful for a moment's respite from the harsh elements. Eric set down the weapon case, stretching his aching muscles. As Raxa joined him... The console flickered to life. A holographic display materialized before them, showing scenes of an ancient conflict. Klingon warriors battled alongside towering, genetically enhanced soldiers, the Zarkalians. They were our allies. Rax's voice was barely a whisper. The hologram shifted, showing the Zarkalians turning on their Klingon masters. Cities burned, empires fell. And then, as quickly as they had appeared, the Zarkalians vanished into the depths of space. Eric's mind raced. This changes everything. If we can get this information to Kavin and the others... Raxa nodded, her face grim. We must press on. The vault isn't far now. They retrieved data files from the ruins and continued their journey. The terrain grew more treacherous with each step. They soon found themselves at the edge of a massive river of molten lava its heat searing their skin, even from a distance. How the hell are we supposed to cross that? Eric shouted over the roar of the inferno. Raxa scanned the area, her eyes lighting up. There, an old mining bridge! The bridge swayed precariously as they inched across, the metal groaning under their weight. Halfway across, a section of the bridge gave way. Eric lunged forward, barely catching Raxa's hand as she fell. With a Herculean effort, he pulled her to safety. They collapsed on the other side, hearts pounding. They pushed on, following the encoded map from the temple ruins. As they neared the vault's location, the hairs on the back of Eric's neck stood up. Something's wrong. It's too quiet. 
Diplasma bolt sizzled past Eric's head, scorching the rock behind him. Ambush, he yelled, diving for cover. Eric! Raxa cried out, catching him as he stumbled. The Zarkalians closed in, their alien features twisted in cruel smiles. Hand over the weapon, one of them hissed, and we'll make your deaths quick. Raxa's eyes darted between Eric, the approaching Zarkalians and the data files from the temple. In a split-second decision, she activated the ancient Klingon self-destruct sequence. The ground beneath them trembled. A blinding light erupted from the data files as the Doomsday Seed activated. Reality itself began to warp and twist around them. What have you done? Eric gasped, clutching his wound. Saved us, Raxa replied grimly. She hauled Eric to his feet, supporting his weight as they staggered towards the now visible vault entrance. Come on! Behind them, the Zarkalian assassins screamed as they were consumed by the growing singularity. The very fabric of space-time tore apart, rocks and debris swirling into the vortex. Raxa dragged the wounded Eric forward. The weapon components clutched tightly in her free hand. The vault entrance loomed before them, their only hope of survival as the world literally fell apart at their heels. They stumbled through the opening, the sound of reality unravelling echoing behind them. The vault door began to close, sealing them inside as the singularity raged. The vault door slammed shut with a thunderous boom, sealing Eric and Raxa inside as the world outside unravelled. They stumbled deeper into the cavernous chamber, the weapon components clutched tightly in Raxa's arms. Eric's legs gave out and he collapsed to the cold metal floor, blood seeping from the plasma wound in his side. Raxa's eyes darted around the dimly lit vault, searching for anything to help. She spotted a small medical station in the corner and dragged Eric towards it. Stay with me, she growled, ripping open his shirt to examine the wound. The smell of burnt flesh filled her nostrils as she cleaned the injury. Eric's breath came in ragged gasps, his skin pale and clammy. Raxa's hands shook as she applied a regenerative gel from the medical kit, willing it to work faster. Hours passed as Raxa worked tirelessly to keep Eric alive. The vault's minimal life support systems hummed in the background, a constant reminder of their precarious situation. She tried the communication panel repeatedly, but only static answered her calls. Eric drifted in and out of consciousness, his fevered mind conjuring vivid hallucinations. In one moment he was back in the ancient temple, deciphering the holographic records with Raxa and Clytus. The next he was on the bridge of a starship, watching helplessly as Zarkalian warships tore through the Klingon defences. Raxa paced the vault, her warrior's instincts screaming against their forced inaction. She examined the weapon components, her eyes landing on the ionic shielding generator, a desperate plan formed in her mind. She dragged the heavy generator to Eric's side, connecting it to the vault's power supply. With a deep breath, she activated the device. A shimmering field of energy enveloped them both. What? What are you doing? Eric mumbled, his eyes struggling to focus. Buying us time, Raxa replied, lying down beside him. The stasis field will slow our metabolism. We can survive for weeks, maybe months. Eric's hand found hers squeezing weakly. And if no one comes? Raxa's face hardened. Then we die together, warrior. The stasis field took hold, and time began to stretch and warp around them. Eric's world became a hazy blur of disjointed images and sensations. He dreamed of triumphant battles alongside Raxa and Clytus, of uncovering ancient Klingon secrets that could turn the tide of war. But always the dream soured, twisting into nightmarish visions of Zarkalian dominance. In one particularly vivid hallucination, Eric stood on a cliff overlooking a vast Klingon city. Raxa and Clytus flanked him, their faces set with purpose. The temple showed us the way, Dream Raxa said, her voice echoing strangely. We can stop them. But as Eric watched, the sky darkened. Zarkalian ships descended like locusts, their weapons reducing the city to ash. He tried to scream, to move, but found himself paralyzed. Meanwhile, far above the vault, chaos reigned. The artificial singularity born from the Doomsday Seed grew unchecked, warping the very fabric of reality. 
subspace fractures spread like cracks in glass, threatening to shatter the entire sector. In a hidden bunker, Clytus and Kivin huddled over tactical displays, their faces gaunt from sleepless nights and constant battle. We have no choice, Kivin growled, smacking his palm on the console. We must use the Planck reactor. Clytus nodded grimly. Prepare a strike team, we take the Chronotech facility at dawn. The assault on the facility was swift and brutal. Klingon warriors driven by desperation and the knowledge that failure meant extinction fought with unparalleled ferocity. They secured the massive quantum singularity contained within the Planck reactor, even as the fabric of space-time buckled around them. With trembling hands, Clytus input the final calculations. The quantum singularity shot forth in a blinding beam of energy, streaking towards the heart of the doomsday-created anomaly. The collision of the two singularities was cataclysmic. Space itself seemed to scream as energies beyond comprehension tore at each other. For a moment it seemed as if the entire universe would be consumed. Then, with a soundless explosion that shook reality to its foundations, a massive subspace vortex ripped open. From its swirling depths emerged ship after ship, a vast armada of Klingon loyalists that had escaped the initial Zarkalian onslaught. Admiral Reynolds' voice crackled over the calm channels. Klingon brothers, we stand with you. Let's take back your world. The combined fleet unleashed hell upon the Zarkalian positions. Orbital bombardments rained down, scouring the invaders from Klingon soil. The Zarkalian forces, caught completely off guard by this impossible turn of events, fell into disarray. As the battle raged above, Clytus's eyes widened with sudden realization. Eric and Raxa, she breathed. We have to find them, now! She turned to Kivin, her voice urgent. Gather every scanner we have, they're out there somewhere, and by Kalis, we're going to bring them home. The vault door creaked open, revealing a scene of desolation. Clytus led the strike team into the chamber, their weapons sweeping the darkness. The acrid stench of ozone and decay assaulted their nostrils. Life signs, a human medic shouted, rushing toward two prone figures on the floor. Clytus knelt beside Eric and Raxa, her heart pounding. Their skin was ashen, breath shallow. The stasis field flickered weakly around them. As the team rushed to stabilize and transport Eric and Raxa, a Zarkalian war cry echoed through the chamber. Plasma bolts sizzled past Clytus's head, scorching the wall behind her. The strike team fought their way out of the vault, Eric and Raxa strapped to hover gurneys. They battled through irradiated wastelands, the sky above them a sickly green from the aftermath of the singularity collision. A mutated beast, its flesh warped by cosmic radiation, lunged at them from the shadows. Clytus ducked under its razor-sharp claws, plunging her deep tug into its throat. The creature's dying screech sent shivers down her spine. After what felt like an eternity, they reached the extraction point. The team piled into the waiting shuttlecraft, which rocketed toward Coven's flagship. In the sickbay, doctors swarmed around Eric and Raxa. Clytus watched anxiously as they worked to stabilize her comrades. Raxa's awake, a nurse called out. She's trying to speak. Clytus rushed to Raxa's side. The Klingon warrior's eyes were unfocused, her voice barely above a whisper. The ruins showed us the way, Raxa rasped. Zarkalians, as not what we thought. As Raxor shared the intel from the ancient temple, Clytus's eyes widened. The implications were staggering. In the war room, Clytus, Kevin, and Admiral Reynolds pored over the recovered data files. Stellar drift calculations scrolled across holographic displays. This quintessence source, Reynolds mused, it's the key to everything. Coven nodded grimly. And our only hope of turning the tide. Clytus input the final calculations, a star map materializing before them. There, that's our target. As they finalized their battle plans, a shadow fell across Clytus's face. She couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong, that an unseen threat lurked in the shadows. The strike team assembled in the hangar bay, boarding a sleek stealth ship. Raxor, still weak but refusing to be left behind, took her place at the helm. 
As the ship slipped out of the hangar and into the void of space, Clytus caught a glimpse of movement in her peripheral vision. She turned, but saw nothing. Strike. The cloaked scout ship lurched violently as another system failure rocked the vessel. Clytus steadied herself against the bulkhead, her eyes scanning the bridge crew for signs of treachery. Engineering reports life support on Deck 3 is offline, a young Klingon officer called out, his voice strained. Raxa slammed her fist on the command console. That's the third critical system failure in as many days. This is no coincidence. Eric, still pale from his near-death experience, leaned in close to Raxa. We need to keep calm. Paranoia will tear this crew apart faster than any saboteur. Calm? Raxa snarled. We're flying into the heart of Zarkalian space on a stolen data file, and our ship is falling apart around us. Someone on this crew is working against us. The tension on the bridge was palpable as crew members exchanged wary glances. Eric opened his mouth to speak again, but was cut off by a thunderous crash from the lower decks. Intruder alert in the weapons bay. The same young officer shouted, his fingers flying over the security controls. Raxa and Clytus exchanged a look before sprinting towards the turbo lift, Eric close on their heels. They burst into the weapons bay to find chaos. Equipment lay scattered across the floor, and in the center of the room stood Korvan, a high-ranking Klingon commander, his eyes wild with rage. Korvan, stand down, Clytus barked, her hand moving to her disruptor. Eric watched in horror as Korvan and Raxa grappled on the floor, the Klingon warrior's face contorted with an inhuman snarl. The Zarkalians have shown me the truth. I am their instrument of destruction. Raxa's elbow connected with Korvan's jaw, but he barely flinched, his hands closed around her throat, eyes blazing with madness. I will not let you reach the quintessence source. Clytus fired her disruptor, the energy beam catching Korvan in the shoulder. He stumbled back, releasing Raxa, who gasped for air. In that moment of distraction, Korvan lunged for a nearby console, his fingers flying over the controls. No, Eric shouted, realizing too late what was happening. A force field sprang up, separating Korvan from the rest of the team. The traitorous Klingon sneered as he downloaded critical navigation data onto a portable device. Your mission ends here, he spat. Before anyone could react, Corvan smashed the emergency release on a nearby escape pod. The vacuum of space pulled at them as the pod detached, carrying the traitor and their vital intelligence into the void. Alarms blared throughout the ship as emergency protocols engaged. Eric helped Raxa to her feet, his mind racing. We need to split up, he said, the beginnings of a plan forming. One team to recover the lost coordinates, another to pursue Corvan. But Raxa, her voice hoarse from the attack, spoke up. Eric's right, it's our only chance. She met Eric's gaze, a silent understanding passing between them. I'll lead the pursuit. Eric, you take a team to the surface. Find those coordinates. As the ship limped towards the Klingon homeworld, Eric prepared his team for the perilous mission ahead. The planet's surface, scarred by war and warped by singularity anomalies, loomed before them. Somewhere in the ruins of their once great civilization lay the key to humanity's survival. Herrick's hands tightened on the controls of their landing craft as they began their descent. The hunt for the Empire's ancient secrets had begun, a race against time and treachery that would determine the fate of galaxies. Eric gripped the controls of the landing craft, his fist clenched as they plunged through the turbulent atmosphere of the Klingon homeworld. The ship bucked and shuddered, alarms blaring as the massive stellar flare bombarded the planet's surface. "'We're losing altitude!' shouted the navigator, frantically adjusting their trajectory. "'The coordinates are just ahead, but that singularity is growing fast.' Eric's eyes locked onto the swirling vortex of distorted space-time that loomed before them. The resurgent singularity pulsed with otherworldly energy, its gravitational pull already tugging at their vessel. We can't outrun it, Eric said, his mind racing. He studied the singularity's spiraling form, a desperate plan taking shape. But we can use it. 
The crew stared at him in disbelief as he outlined his audacious strategy. Using the Singularity's warped space-time as a cosmic slingshot was pure insanity, but their options were rapidly dwindling. Klingon science team, this is Eric, he barked into the comm. I need you to create an ionic implosion within the anomaly. We're going to ride it out. As the scientists worked feverishly, Eric maneuvered the ship closer to the Singularity's moor. Warning klaxons shrieked as they skimmed the event horizon, the very fabric of reality twisting around them. Implosion in three, two, one, the Klingon scientist's voice crackled over the comm. A blinding flash erupted from within the Singularity. Eric's hands flew over the controls, angling the ship to catch the leading edge of the newly formed subspace funnel. The vessel lurched violently, pinning the crew to their seats as they accelerated to impossible speeds. For a moment, it seemed they had succeeded. Then a sickening crack echoed through the ship. Emergency force fields sprang to life as the hull breach tore through the medical bay. Eric watched in horror as half the science team was sucked into the void before the breach could be sealed. The Klingon engineer's voice came through static-filled and resigned. The force fields won't hold. Someone has to manually seal the breach. No, there has to be another way, Eric pleaded. But he knew the truth. Cormac's sacrifice would save them all. The ship hurtled through transwarp space for a grueling week. When they finally emerged, the crew was battered and mourning their losses. But before them hung their prize, a rogue quantum singularity, pulsing with primordial energy. By Kales, breathed the science officer, it's the source, the wellspring of all Klingon quintessence. As Eric's team raced to unravel the singularity's secrets, light years away, Raxor led her warriors in pursuit of the traitor Corvan. They cornered him on a desolate world, the air thick with the smell of ozone and blood. Raxor's batleth clashed against Corvan's, sparks flying as they dueled amidst the rubble of an ancient Klingon outpost. Why, Corvan? she snarled, parrying a vicious strike. Why betray your people? Corvan's eyes blazed with fanatical fervor. You fool! The Zarkalians have shown me the truth. They are our salvation. As their battle raged on, Raxo began to see the cracks in Corvan's façade. His movements were mechanical, his words rehearsed. When her blade finally found its mark, Corvan's dying words chilled her to the bone. The bunker! Arn Boreth! he gasped. The true masters, they await you. Raxa rallied her loyal warriors, their blood singing with the promise of battle. Yet as they set course for Boreth, a seed of doubt took root in her mind. The Zarkalian threat ran deeper than they had ever imagined. Back at the quintessence source, Eric's team worked tirelessly. They had to find a way to disperse the particles across the galaxy before the Zarkalians arrived. The fate of entire civilizations hung in the balance. Sir! A young ensign called out, her voice urgent. Long-range sensors are picking up a massive Zarkalian fleet. They'll be here within hours. Herrick's heart made as he surveyed his battered crew and their half-finished plans. The final battle for the future of the galaxy was about to begin, and they were dangerously unprepared. Rax's boots pounded the metal floor as she led her team through the twisting corridors of the secret Zarkalian bunker. The acrid smell of ozone filled the air, remnants of their explosive entry. Sweat beaded on her brow as they rounded another corner, disruptors at the ready. Clear, shouted her second-in-command, Gronak. Something felt off. The facility was too quiet, too empty. Raxor's instincts screamed danger. Wait, she hissed, holding up a clenched fist. Her warriors froze. A faint hiss filled the air. Rax's eyes widened as she realized their fatal mistake. Gas! Everyone out now! But it was too late. The neurotoxin flooded the corridors, seeping through even their sealed armor. Raxa watched in horror as her team collapsed one by one, their bodies convulsing. She fought to stay conscious, her vision blurring as she staggered against the wall. A shimmering form materialized before her, a hologram of a Klingon warrior, his face twisted into a cruel sneer. Welcome, Raxa, the figure said, his voice dripping with contempt. I am Korvash. 
Raxa's knees buckled as she struggled to focus on the legendary warrior's face. Impossible, she gasped. You died centuries ago. As Raxa's consciousness faded, Korvash revealed the horrifying truth. His genetic enhancements, his infiltration of the Empire, the generations of Zarkalian sleeper agents he had planted thing on society. Your capture, Korvash gloated, is the final piece. The Klingon resistance dies with you. Light years away, Eric stood on the bridge of his vessel, tension radiating from every fiber of his being. The harmonic resonance array was primed, ready to disperse the quantum singularity's power across the galaxy. Sir, his tactical officer shouted, massive subspace distortions forming. Eric's blood ran cold as he watched a vast armada of Zarkalian warships materialize around them. Their angular hulls bristled with weapons, dwarfing the Allied fleet. All ships engage, Admiral Reynolds' voice crackled over the comm. We must buy time for the resonance array. Eric gripped the arms of his command chair as the space around them erupted into chaos. Energy beams lanced across the void, explosions blossoming in silence. He watched helplessly as Allied ships were torn apart under the Zarkalian onslaught. Resonance sequence initiated, his science officer reported. A brilliant burst of energy erupted from the singularity, washing over Eric's ship in waves of coruscating light. The Zarkalian vessels closest to the anomaly began to break apart, their hulls twisting as if made of putty. Admiral Reynolds's ship is critically damaged, the tactical officer shouted. They're evacuating to our vessel. Eric's fingers flew over his console, coordinating the desperate transfer of personnel. He caught a glimpse of Reynolds materializing on the transporter pad, just as another violent tremor rocked the ship. The singularity is destabilizing, the science officer yelled. We need to get out of here. Plot a course, maximum warp, Eric ordered. Engage now. The stars blurred around them as they leapt to warp speed. Behind them, the quantum singularity collapsed in on itself, before exploding outward in a cataclysmic burst of dark matter and quintessence particles. The shockwave caught the remaining Zarkalian ships, obliterating them instantly. As the adrenaline of battle faded, Eric allowed himself a moment of hope. They had succeeded. The galaxy was now saturated with particles that would negate the Zarkalians' genetic tampering. The victory was short-lived. Eric's heart sank as Raxa's battered face appeared on the screen. Her eyes were wild with fear and pain as she delivered her chilling message, the capture of her team, the true extent of Corvas's infiltration, and his plans for a new weapon to destroy and remake Klingon civilization. You must bring him the resonance technology, Raxa pleaded, her voice breaking, or we die. The transmission cut out, leaving Eric staring at a blank screen. The weight of an entire civilization's fate pressed down upon him as he contemplated the impossible choice before him. Eric's expression resolute as he considered Raxa's desperate plea. The weight of two civilizations pressed down on his shoulders. He turned to Admiral Reynolds, his voice low and urgent. We have no choice, we must go. Reynolds nodded grimly. Already what's left of the fleet... Hours later, Eric stood on the bridge of the flagship as it dropped out of warp above the Klingon homeworld. The planet's scarred surface filled the viewscreen, a testament to centuries of warfare. Receiving coordinates for Korvash's base, the tactical officer reported. Eric's eyes narrowed as he studied the fortress-like structure, nestled in a mountain range. Any sign of Raxor or her team? Negative, sir but we're detecting multiple life signs within the complex. Eric Wilson, Corvash's voice dripped with contempt. I trust you've brought what I asked for. Eric forced his face to remain impassive. We have the resonance technology. Now show us Raxor and her warriors. Corvash's lips curled into a sneer. The camera panned, revealing Raxor and her team bound and bloodied in a holding cell. Eric's fists clenched at his sides. Beam down with your scientists and the data, Corvus ordered. Any tricks and they die. The transmission cut out 
Eric turned to Reynolds, speaking quietly. You know what to do. Minutes later, Eric materialized in Korvash's command center with a team of scientists. They carried data pads and equipment cases, their faces a mask of forced calm. Korvas loomed over them, flanked by heavily armed guards. The technology now. Eric nodded to the lead scientist, who stepped forward with a data pad. The resonance specs are all here. We'll need to calibrate. A deafening explosion rocked the base. Alarms blared as the room plunged into darkness. Eric's team sprang into action, tackling the nearest guards. Eric launched himself at Korvash, driving his shoulder into the Klingon's midsection. They crashed to the floor, grappling in the chaos. Now, Eric shouted into his calm badge. The air crackled with energy as Reynolds's strike team beamed in, disruptors blazing. Eric rolled away from Korvash, drawing his own weapon. Find Raxer, he ordered, diving for cover as return fire filled the room. Eric sprinted down a corridor, following the layout they'd studied. He rounded a corner and came face to face with two Zarkalian guards. Without hesitation, he fired, dropping them both. The holding cell door loomed ahead. Eric blasted the control panel and the door hissed open. Raxa looked up, her eyes widening in recognition. You're welcome, Eric retorted, helping her to her feet. We need to move. Korvash has... The weapon plans, Raxa finished. I know, we have to stop the upload. They fought their way through the base, reuniting with Clytus and her infiltration team. As they neared Korvash's inner sanctum, the resistance stiffened. He's activated the uplink, Clytus shouted over the din of battle. Eric nodded grimly. Then we end this now. They burst into the sanctum, weapons at the ready. Korvash stood before a massive computer terminal, his hands flying over the controls. You're too late, he snarled, whirling to face them. What followed was a blur of violence. Korvash moved with inhuman speed and strength, his centuries of combat experience on full display. Eric, Raxor, and Clytus fought as one, each compensating for the other's weaknesses. Eric's disruptor was knocked from his grasp. He dove, narrowly avoiding Korvash's blade. Raxor's batleth clanged against the Zarkalian's armor, buying Eric precious seconds. Clytus' voice cut through the chaos. The uplink, it's transmitting. Eric's eyes locked onto the computer terminal. In that moment, he knew what he had to do. Korvas roared in fury, but Raxer and Clytus blocked his path. Eric's fingers flew over the controls, desperately trying to sever the connection. A force field sprang to life around the terminal. Eric realized with growing horror that the only way to stop the transmission was from inside the field, a move that would mean certain death. He met Raxer's eyes across the room, in that split second, a lifetime of unspoken words passed between them. Eric stepped through the force field. Eric stepped through the force field, his body racked with pain as the energy tore through him. His fingers flew across the console, desperately working to sever the uplink. With a final burst of strength, he pounded his fist down on the termination sequence. The room exploded in a blinding flash of light. Eric's world went dark. Eric's eyes fluttered, catching glimpses of Raxer and Clytus. Their faces were etched with worry as they watched the frantic efforts to save his life. Admiral Reynolds burst into the room, her uniform singed and torn. Status? she barked. The lead surgeon shook his head. It's bad, Admiral. The quintessence exposure, his cells are breaking down faster than we can repair them. Raxor stepped forward, her voice low and intense. There is another way, the regenerative stasis chambers on Boreth. Clytus nodded. It's risky, but it may be his only chance. Then we will be the first, Raxer growled. Hours of tense negotiation followed. Eric drifted in and out of consciousness, aware only of the burning pain that consumed him. Finally, clearance was granted. Eric felt himself being moved, the rush of a transporter beam enveloping him. He materialized in a cavernous chamber hewn from living rock. Robed figures, the monks of Boreth, surrounded him, chanting in guttural Klingon. Raxer and Clytus worked alongside them, 
preparing a massive cylindrical device crackling with strange energies. The quintessence core is unstable, one of the monks warned. We must work quickly. Eric was lifted onto a cold metal platform. He caught Raxa's eye, seeing the fear and dedication written across her face. Suddenly the cavern shook. The sound of weapons fire echoed through the stone corridors. Hazarkalians, Clytus shouted, drawing his disruptor. A deafening explosion rocked the chamber. Alarms blared as the quintessence core began to overload, tendrils of raw energy lashing out. The chamber's destabilizing, a monk cried. We can't contain it. Eric watched in horror as Raxor made her choice. Without hesitation, she leapt onto the platform beside him, plunging her hands into the swirling vortex of quintessence. What are you doing? Eric rasped. Raxa's face contorted in agony as the energy coursed through her. Saving you, she gritted out. The monks worked frantically, stabilizing the core with Raxa's essence. Eric felt a strange tingling sensation as his cells began to knit back together. It's working, Clytus shouted over the din of battle, initiating stasis field now. Eric's world began to fade, the pain receding. The last thing he saw was Rax's face, her eyes locked on his, as the stasis field enveloped them both. Darkness closed in, and Eric knew no more. In the depths of the quintessence chamber, Rax's consciousness floated in a sea of swirling energy, her essence intertwined with Eric's, their very atoms dancing in an eternal embrace. Time lost all meaning as she cradled his gradually reforming body, pouring her life force into his cellular rebirth. Outside the chamber, years passed. Clytus stood before a gathering of Klingon warriors and human officers, her voice echoing through the great hall. The Zarkalian threat may be diminished, but we must remain vigilant, she declared, her fist slamming onto the podium. Our alliance stands strong, but there are those who would see it crumble. Admiral Reynolds nodded grimly, her uniform crisp despite the weight of command. We've rooted out three more insurgent cells in the past month alone. They're getting desperate. As they spoke, a storm raged over the Brotherhood Monastery. Lightning split the sky, striking the ancient stone walls. Inside the regeneration vault, alarms blared as energy levels spiked. Containment failing, a monk shouted, his hands flying over control panels. For a brief instant, Raxor felt herself ripped from the quintessent stream. In that moment of disconnection, a flood of images assaulted her mind. She saw Eric, but not as she knew him. His eyes blazed with malevolent power, entire worlds crumbling at his whim, billions of lives snuffed out in an instant. As quickly as it came, the vision faded. Raxa found herself once again merged with the quintessence, but the psychic imprint lingered. She knew what she had to do. With monumental effort, Raxa focused her energy coalescing into a physical form. She materialized outside the chamber, startling the attending monks. You must not leave, one cried, reaching for her. Raxor dodged his grasp, her newly formed legs unsteady. She stumbled through the corridors, her mind racing. The forbidden texts spoke of an ancient rite, one that could cleanse the taint she sensed growing within Eric. But to perform it, she needed artifacts long hidden away. As she reached the monastery gates, alarms blared. Clytus's voice rang out over the compound. Secure all exits. The subject must not escape. Raxor sprinted into the night, her heart pounding. She had to reach the caves of Kales, where the first purification rituals were performed. Behind her, she heard the whine of disruptors powering up. Halt! Reynolds' voice cut through the darkness. Raxor, stand down. You're not well. But Raxor pressed on, her legs pumping as she raced towards her destiny. She rounded a corner and found herself face to face with a figure she never expected to see again. Raxor nodded, relief flooding through her. The Quintessence Temple, she gasped. It's our only hope. Together they turned towards the sacred mountain where the temple stood. In the distance, they heard the approaching forces of Clytus and Reynolds. The race to save Eric and the galaxy had begun. Clytus plunged into the swirling vortex of quintessence. 
his consciousness stretching across infinite planes of existence. He sensed Rax's essence ahead, a familiar beacon in the chaos. With a final push, he materialized beside her in a realm beyond mortal comprehension. Raxa, Clytus called out, his voice echoing strangely in the metaphysical expanse. I followed your trail. What's happening to Eric? Raxor's form flickered, her energy strained. The corruption spreads. We must act now. Before them, Eric's essence writhed, tendrils of darkness snaking through his once pure quintessence. Clytus felt the weight of reality itself bearing down upon them, threatening to collapse into nothingness. Focus your mind, Raxor instructed, her voice tight with concentration. We must create a resonance prism. Clytus nodded. Drawing upon centuries of Klingon martial training, he synchronized his thoughts with Rax's, their combined psionic energy coalescing into a shimmering barrier around Eric's core. Raxa wasted no time. She dove into the maelstrom of Eric's essence, her consciousness merging with the human's primal imprint. Clytus watched in awe as she began to burn away the metaphysical toxins, her spirit glowing white-hot with effort. While Raxa worked, Clytus erected psychotronic deflectors, containing the purged corruption. Dark, writhing forms assaulted his mental barriers, each more horrific than the last. He gritted his teeth, pouring every ounce of his willpower into maintaining the defense. Almost there. Raxo's voice was strained, barely audible above the cosmic tumult. Suddenly an explosive force ripped through the realm. Clytus stumbled, his deflectors wavering. A vast ancient presence loomed over them, the quintessence avatar itself. You dare disrupt the sacred flow? Its voice boomed across dimensions, shaking the very fabric of existence. Ethereal tendrils lashed out, seeking to expel the intruders. Clytus found himself locked in combat with forces beyond mortal comprehension, his very essence stretched to its limits. Raxa, he shouted, we can't hold out much longer. Just then a brilliant light pierced the veil of reality. Through a shimmering portal, Clytus saw familiar forms materialize, Kevin, Admiral Reynolds, and a cadre of elite Klingon warriors. Stand fast, Kevin roared, his battle cry echoing across the cosmos. We fight for Eric for the future. The reinforcements charged into the fray, their non-corporeal forms blazing with pure combat focus. They bought precious seconds, holding back the Avatar's onslaught. Raxa seized the moment. With a final desperate push, she poured her entire being into Eric's quintessence core. Clytus felt the shift, a pulse of pure energy radiating outward. The realm around them began to collapse, reality folding in on itself. Clytus reached out, grasping for his comrades as the cosmos seemed to implode. Then in a blinding flash everything changed, a wave of purified quintessence exploded outward, washing over them all. Clytus felt himself being hurled across dimensions, tumbling through an infinity of reborn worlds. As his consciousness stabilized, Clytus found himself back in physical form, gasping for breath on the cold stone floor of the quintessence temple. Beside him, Raxa stirred, her eyes fluttering open. Eric, she whispered, her voice hoarse, did we... Clytus turned, his heart pounding as he looked towards the regeneration chamber. Clytus blinked, his vision clearing as the cosmic reset faded. He found himself sprawled on the cold stone floor of the quintessence temple, surrounded by his comrades. Admiral Reynolds groaned nearby, while General Kivin was already on his feet, scanning the chamber with alert eyes. Eric, Raxa gasped, her voice weak but urgent, we must act now. Clytus scrambled to his feet, rushing to the regeneration vault. His eyes widened as he saw the damage. Cracks spiderwebbed across the transparent casing, pulsing with an eerie light. Eric's form within flickered in and out of existence. The temporal stabilizers are failing, Reynolds said, her face grim as she studied a nearby control panel. We're losing containment. A violent tremor shook the temple. Chunks of ancient stone crashed to the floor around them. Kavin barked orders to his warriors, securing the perimeter. Raxor pushed past them all, 
her hands flying over the archaic controls of the quintessence matrix. There's only one chance, she said, her voice tight with concentration. We must redirect the temporal flux. Energy crackled around the vault as Raxa worked. The air itself seemed to warp and twist. Clytus felt his stomach lurch as reality bent around them. Creating a quantum bubble, Raxa replied, not looking up from her work. It's the only way to complete Eric's rebirth. A blinding flash erupted from the vault. When Clytus could see again, he gasped. A shimmering sphere of energy surrounded Eric's stasis form, pulsing with otherworldly power. Raxa stepped forward, her eyes blazing with purpose. I must join with him, she said. My essence will stabilize the Matrix. Before anyone could protest, Raxa plunged into the quantum bubble. Her form seemed to stretch and distort, merging with the swirling energies. Eric's body began to glow, brighter and brighter. The temple shook violently. Clytus heard Kavin shouting orders to evacuate, but he couldn't tear his eyes away from the incredible sight before him. With a thunderous crack, the quantum bubble exploded. A wave of pure energy knocked Clytus off his feet. As he struggled to rise, he saw a figure coalescing where Eric and Raxor had been. It was Eric, but not as they had known him. His body shimmered with quintessence energy, his eyes pools of cosmic fire. A faint echo of Raxor's form separated briefly, her voice echoing in their minds. Without another word, Eric's new form shot upward, tearing through the temple's ancient roof and vanishing into the stars. Clytus stared after them, his knees going weak from what he had witnessed. Clytus! Reynolds' sharp voice snapped him back to reality. We need to move now. He nodded, following her from the crumbling chamber. As they ran, Clytus's tactical mind was already racing, formulating plans. In a secured hall deep within the temple, Clytus gathered his unlikely allies. Klingon warriors stood shoulder to shoulder with human spec ops teams. The Avatar's regents, cloaked in shimmering robes, watched from the shadows. We face a grave task, Clytus said, his voice echoing in the ancient chamber. Eric has ascended beyond our realm, but his power may be too great for this universe to contain. Reynolds stepped forward her face set with unbreakable spirit. What are you proposing, Clytus? He met her gaze steadily. We must bring Eric back to the mortal plane by any means necessary. The assembled warriors muttered among themselves. Kivin silenced them with a growl. And how do you propose we challenge a being of pure quintessence? He demanded. Clytus turned to the regents. We'll need your wisdom, he said, and your most powerful artifacts. One of the robed figures nodded slowly. We have foreseen this day, it intoned. The sword of Kales may yet pierce the veil between worlds. Then we have our weapon, Clytus said. He looked around the room, meeting the eyes of each warrior in turn. Who among you will join this quest? To save not just Eric, but perhaps reality itself. A chorus of war cries answered him. Klingon and human alike, they pledged themselves to the mission. As Clytus began outlining their plan of attack, a cold feeling settled in his gut. He couldn't shake the sense that this battle would test them all in ways they could never imagine. The merged essence of Eric and Raxa streaked through the void, a comet of pure quintessence. They approached a bizarre cosmic structure, a planetoid that defied the laws of physics, orbiting perpendicular to the galactic plane. There! Raxa's voice echoed in their shared consciousness, the key to our permanence. Eric felt a surge of anticipation as they neared the anomaly's shimmering event horizon, but their approach didn't go unnoticed. From the depths of higher dimensions, writhing forms emerged. Entropy worms, ancient and hungry, sensed the potent quintessence radiating from the merged duo. Their eldritch tendrils lashed out, seeking to ensnare and devour. Raxa's essence fragmented, creating a psionic shield around them. Eric, drawing on instincts he didn't know he possessed, began to move. His consciousness flowed through martial forms, each motion unleashing devastating quantum flares. The first wave of worms disintegrated, their forms seared away by Eric's assault. But more kept coming. For each one destroyed, two more took its place.
adapting to Eric's attacks. They're learning, Eric communicated to Raxa. We can't keep this up forever. As he spoke, a tendril slipped past their defenses. Eric felt a sharp pain as it began to leech their shared quintessence. The worms pressed their advantage, swarming around them in a miasmic cloud of entropy. The anomaly, Rax's voice was strained. We must reach its core, it's our only chance. Eric sensed Raxa gathering their combined energy, focusing it to a single point. In a blinding flash they shot forward, piercing through the swarm of worms and plunging into the heart of the anomaly. Reality twisted around them, time stretched and compressed, probability itself unravelling. Eric lost all sense of self, his consciousness fragmented across infinite possibilities. When awareness returned, Eric found himself in a vast timeless expanse. At its centre stood a hypersphere of impossible geometry, pulsing with ancient power. Eric reached out with their shared quintessence, interfacing with the control archways that surrounded the structure. But their reprieve was short-lived. The entropy worms, driven mad by the chase, converged on the anomaly. Their combined assault tore through the fabric of space-time itself. Eric felt the first shockwave hit. The hypersphere trembled, cracks spreading across its surface. Causal chains shattered, threatening to unravel the very laws of physics. We have to stabilize it, Rax's voice cut through the chaos. The archways use them. Eric poured their shared quintessence into the ancient controls, desperately trying to reinforce the collapsing structure. But as the worm's assault intensified, he knew it wouldn't be enough. They needed more time, more power. Energy surged through Eric's being as he channeled the full power of his and Rax's unified quintessence. The entropy worm's assault intensified, unleashing a maelstrom of antimatter storm fronts that threatened to tear apart the very fabric of the anomaly's stellar sphere. Eric's consciousness expanded, perceiving the multidimensional battlefield in its entirety. He wove intricate patterns of collapsed probability vortices, erecting layered chrono-shielding domes that shimmered into existence around the hypersphere. The initial wave front of the worm's attack crashed against these defenses, dissipating in a spectacular display of dimensional energy. Hold fast, Eric communicated to Raxa through their shared essence. We can weather this storm. But the worms adapted with terrifying speed. Their entropic resonances shifted, bypassing the shielding through hyperdimensional phase shifts. Massive chunks of the Stellosphere's chrono-manifold began to disintegrate under the relentless onslaught. Eric felt Raxa's essence fragment, spreading across backup submatrices throughout the anomaly. Her voice echoed through their shared consciousness, strained but unwavering. We must safeguard our quintessence. It's our only hope. Drawing upon knowledge he didn't know he possessed, Eric tapped into an ancient Klingon quintessence discipline. His mind raced through arcane calculations, unlocking a hidden subroutine buried deep within the Stellosphere's control pathways. The hypersphere's ultra-dense core ignited, in a controlled fusion implosion, reality itself seemed to bend as an anti-stochastic singularity spawned at the anomaly's heart. Its gravitomic field pulsed outward, an inexorable force that began to draw in the entropy worms. Herrick watched in awe as the writhing forms of their attackers collapsed, compressed into sub-quantum singularities from which they could never escape. Victory seemed within reach. But the worms had one final high-stakes endeavor, a Niger storm, a chrono-inversive reaction of unimaginable power, materialized, aimed directly at the anti-stochastic singularity's hyper-event horizon. Eric's mind raced, calculating the consequences. If that Niger storm struck before the singularity stabilized, it would detonate their interlinked quintessence matrices across infinite dimensional planes. Raxa, Eric called out, his essence trembling with urgency. We have no choice. We must merge completely with the singularity. Without hesitation, Eric began the upload process. He felt Rax's agreement, her love and trust flowing through their shared connection. Their quintessence matrices streamed into the singularity's unified non-local subspace manifold. As their essences dispersed into the infinite iterative compression sequences, 
Eric experienced a moment of profound clarity. He and Raxa were no longer separate entities, but a single, unified force of creation. The singularity collapsed to unimaginable densities, compressing all of existence into a single point of infinite potential. Matter and antimatter, entropy and negentropy, possibility and inevitability, all merged into a singular, ultimate duality. At the hypervolumetric center of this cosmic seed, Eric and Rax's love crystallized into the primordial truth of the universe. It was a force strong enough to anchor a newborn multiversal matrix reality into existence. The Negastorm struck, its entropic wavefront crashing against the compressed singularity. But instead of destruction, it found only absorption. The newly birthed Omniverx swallowed the chaotic energy whole, incorporating it into its infant geodesics. In that eternal instant, stretched across all of time and space, Eric and Raxer experienced existence in its purest form. Their intertwined consciousness became the foundation of all reality, a love so profound it transcended the very concept of being. Together, they formed the new Matrix's primordial truth, an unbreakable bond from which all omniversal realities would spring forth for eternity. The cosmic dance of creation froze. Eric sensed a tremor rippling through the fabric of reality. Something was wrong. Fragments of entropy worms, remnants of their earlier battle, coalesced into swirling vortexes of chaotic energy. These quantum distortions tore through the nascent Omniverx, shredding dimensional layers seamlessly. Eric's consciousness expanded, interfacing with the primordial forces of existence. He felt Rax's essence intertwined with his own, their unified quintessence forming the very bedrock of this new reality. We must act. Rax's thoughts resonated through their shared consciousness. The Omniverx is destabilizing. Eric focused his will, channeling vast streams of gravitonic energy. A shimmering barrier materialized, encapsulating the entropic anomalies, but the effort drained their reserves, leaving the Omniverx's foundational structures dangerously weak. At the core of creation, Eric watched in horror as their unified quintessence began to fracture. His human essence diverged from Rax's Klingon matrix, each seeking equilibrium in separate quantum states. No. Eric's anguished cry echoed across dimensional planes. He fought to maintain their connection, but the entropic forces proved too strong. Reality shattered. Infinite variations of existence blossomed outward, each a unique permutation of their combined essences. Eric found himself adrift in a sea of possibilities, catching fleeting glimpses of utopian worlds and nightmarish hellscapes. In one reality, he stood on a verdant hill overlooking a shining metropolis. The next instant he materialized in a desolate wasteland, acrid smoke burning his lungs. With each shift, Eric desperately searched for Raxa. Eric's perceptions stabilized. He blinked, finding himself on a familiar street corner in San Francisco. Cars zipped by, pedestrians bustled along the sidewalk. Everything looked normal. And yet... He closed his eyes, extending his senses beyond the physical realm. This earth vibrated at a slightly different frequency than his home dimension. Subtle differences in quantum harmonics permeated every atom. Across the galaxy, Raxor experienced a similar awakening on Konos. The warrior stood atop a craggy mountain, surveying the sprawling Klingon capital below. To mortal eyes, nothing seemed amiss. But Raxor perceived the wrongness on a fundamental level. Eric opened his mind, straining to re-establish their psychic link. He caught faint echoes of Rax's essence, but couldn't pinpoint her location across the vast multiverse. How long? Eric whispered, studying his surroundings. How much time has passed since we merged with the singularity? The encrypted temporal signatures in his quintessence matrix offered no clear answer. Moments or millennia could have elapsed in the span between cosmic rebirth and multiversal fragmentation. One truth became painfully clear. Their symbiotic bond had been severed. To reunite, they would need to realign the entropic anchors holding this patchwork multiverse together. Herrick's gaze turned skyward, 
a mix of commitment and uncertainty etched on his face. Somewhere out there, across infinite realities, Raxa searched for him too. Their cosmic dance had only just begun. Eric blinked, his senses overwhelmed by the bustling San Francisco street corner. Cars honked, pedestrians chatted on phones, and the scent of fresh coffee wafted from a nearby cafe. Yet beneath this veneer of normalcy, he felt the wrongness thrumming through every atom. Eric's eyes flew open, his breath catching. What's blocking us, he muttered, scanning the crowd. No one paid him any mind, oblivious to the cosmic drama unfolding. Across the galaxy, Raxa stood atop a craggy Kornos peak, her newly manifested form tingling with residual energy. She gazed down at the sprawling Klingon capital, its architecture subtly different from her memories. The battle-scarred Klingon emerged from behind a boulder, disbelief etched on his face. Raxa, impossible! You vanished cycles ago. Raxa met his gaze. The multiverse fractures, old friend. We face a threat beyond our comprehension. Kaven's hand instinctively went to his duke tug. Explain. As Raxa detailed the crisis, Eric felt reality itself shudder. On a busy San Francisco sidewalk, he stumbled, steadying himself against a storefront. In his mind's eye, he saw entire universes wink out of existence, overwhelmed by entropic forces. No time to waste, Eric muttered. He ducked into an alley, closing his eyes to focus. When he emerged, he wore the guise of Kiyirin, silver-haired, eyes glowing with otherworldly knowledge. Within hours, a select group gathered in a hidden underground facility. World leaders, Nobel laureates, and scientific visionaries sat in tense silence as Eric revealed the truth. Our reality teeters on the brink, he intoned, his voice resonating with power. The very fabric of existence unravels. We must act now to save not just our world, but all worlds. A murmur of disbelief rippled through the room. The U.S. president leaned forward, skepticism plain on his face. How can we possibly verify such an outlandish claim? Eric raised his hand, channeling a fraction of his quintessence. The air shimmered, and for a brief moment, the assembled group glimpsed the cosmic tapestry. Countless realities intertwined, some fraying at the edges. As the vision faded, Eric surveyed the stunned faces before him. Now you understand the stakes. We must locate the entropic anchor points stabilizing our local multiverse. It's our only hope of preventing total collapse. On Kornos, Raxor stood before the hastily assembled council of Klingon mystic warriors. Their eyes blazed with a mixture of awe and battle lust as she outlined their vital role in the coming struggle. As both Eric and Raxor rallied their respective forces, neither could shake the gnawing emptiness where their bond once thrived. Somewhere in the vast, fractured multiverse, an unseen force worked to keep them apart, even as the fate of all existence hung in the balance. Eric's eyes snapped open, his consciousness abruptly returning to the bustling San Francisco street corner. The vibrations of wrongness intensified, sending shivers through his very being. He knew time was running out. Ducking into a nearby alley, Eric focused his will. His form shimmered, transforming into the silver-haired visage of Chiron. With newfound purpose, he strode out onto the sidewalk, people instinctively parting before his otherworldly presence. Within hours, Kirin stood before a hastily assembled group of Earth's brightest minds. Nobel laureates, quantum physicists, and government leaders fidgeted nervously in the underground bunker. Our reality fractures, Kirin intoned, his voice resonating with power. We stand on the precipice of multiversal collapse. Dr. Amelia Chen, a renowned astrophysicist, leaned forward. With all due respect, that's impossible. The math doesn't... Kyrin raised his hand, cutting her off. The air rippled, and suddenly the room was awash in swirling cosmic energies. The assembled group gasped as they witnessed realities fraying at the edges, entire universes winking out of existence. Now you see, Kyrin said as the vision faded, we must locate the entropic anchor point stabilizing our local multiverse. It's our only hope. Across the galaxy, 
Raxa materialized atop a craggy Kornos peak. Her newly formed body tingled with residual energy as she surveyed the sprawling Klingon capital below. The battle-scarred Klingon emerged from behind a boulder, his hand instinctively going to his deep tug. Raxa? Impossible, you vanished cycles ago. Araxa met his gaze unflinchingly. The multiverse fractures, old friend. We face a threat beyond mortal comprehension. Keevan's eyes narrowed. Explain. As Raxa outlined the crisis, she felt a gnawing emptiness where her bond with Eric once thrived. Something was actively disrupting their connection across realities. Within days, Raxor stood before the hastily assembled council of Klingon mystic warriors. Their eyes blazed with a mixture of awe and battle lust as she detailed their vital role in the coming struggle. We are the guardians of existence itself, Raxor proclaimed, her voice carrying across the ancient chamber. Our strength, our wisdom, our very essence, all will be tested in the trials to come. On Earth, Kirin coordinated teams of scientists across multiple realities. Graviton mapping arrays hummed to life, tracing the elusive paths of cosmic strings through higher dimensions. Dr. Chen's eyes widened as she studied the readouts. These filaments, they permeate all realities if we could stabilize them. Precisely, Kirin nodded. These are the anchors we seek. Meanwhile, Raxor led strike teams of Klingon warriors into the uncharted fringes of the multiverse. They pushed through swirling clouds of raw entropy, their metaphysical training barely containing the chaos threatening to unmake them. Hold fast, Raxor shouted as reality itself seemed to buckle around them. We near our target. Suddenly both Chiron and Raxor felt a massive surge of energy. Their separate quests had led them to the same point, an anomalous nexus where multiple cosmic strings intertwined. Kirin's voice echoed across dimensions. Raxor, do you see it? I do, she replied, their psychic link briefly flaring to life. This nexus, it's the key to everything. As they studied the roiling entropy engulfing the nexus, the grim truth became clear. Any direct attempt to stabilize this critical anchor point would trigger a catastrophic chain reaction, unraveling all connected realities. Kieran's eyes met Raxos across the dimensional divide. We have one chance, he said, a synchronized strike from both sides. Raxor nodded, understanding flowing between them. Let us bring order to chaos, my love. In a flurry of activity, human scientists and Klingon warriors prepared for the most ambitious operation in multiversal history. A goodness, quantum baffles and chronostasis fields were carefully calibrated, ready to contain the impending centropic storm here. Chiron raised his hand, signaling the human forces. Across realities, Raxa did the same for her Klingon strike teams. Now! they shouted in unison. Reality itself seemed to shudder as the combined forces plunged into the heart of the Nexus. The maelstrom of entropic energy dissipated, leaving Eric and his team standing amidst the smoldering ruins of what was once Kyornos. The air crackled with residual quantum distortions, a stark reminder of the devastation they'd narrowly averted. Eric surveyed the desolate landscape, his silver hair whipping in the acrid wind. Where the ancient temple once stood, only a yawning chasm remained. His heart sank as the reality of Rax's disappearance set in. Status report, he barked, turning to Dr. Chen. The astrophysicist's fingers danced across her tricorder. Multiple realities destabilized, sir. We're detecting widespread entropic damage across the multiverse. Eric nodded grimly. And Raxa? Eric closed his eyes, reaching out with his quintessence. Where Raxa's presence once burned bright, he felt only a cold, empty void. He opened his eyes, his face a mask of perseverance. We need to regroup. Set course for Earth Prime. Earth hung in space, a pale shadow of its former self. Vast swathes of the planet's surface were scarred by entropic burns, entire continents reshaped by the cosmic forces they'd unleashed. Eric piloted their craft to a hidden base deep within the Rocky Mountains. As they disembarked, he was met by a haggard-looking General Hawthorne. 
Hawthorne led them to a holographic war room. With a wave of his hand, a three-dimensional map of the multiverse flickered to life. Countless pinpricks of light represented parallel realities, many of them pulsing an angry red. It's bad, Hawthorne said. We've lost contact with over 60% of known parallel Earths. Those we can reach report catastrophic damage. Eric studied the map intently. His eyes narrowed as he spotted an anomaly, a single point of pristine blue light amidst the sea of red. There, he said, pointing. What's that? Dr. Chen hurried to a nearby console, her fingers flying over the controls. Incredible, she breathed. It's a parallel Earth, completely untouched by the entropy wave. Eric's mind raced with possibilities. We need to establish contact immediately. This could be our salvation, a beachhead for multiversal reconstruction. As the team worked feverishly to open communications with the pristine reality, Eric's thoughts drifted to Raxa. He pictured her facing unknown perils in a realm beyond their comprehension, and his chest tightened with worry. On the ravaged Quonos, Raxa stood before the ancient teleportal archway, its surface shimmering with eldritch energies. The air hummed with power as her Klingon warriors chanted in low, guttural tones. The time has come, Raxa intoned, her voice resonating with otherworldly power, we must secure a future for our people. The chanting reached a fever pitch. Reality itself seemed to bend and warp around them. Raxor's body began to dissolve, her essence intertwining with the archway's transdimensional matrix. In that moment of cosmic alignment, Raxor felt a sudden overwhelming sense of dread, but it was too late to turn back. The vortex erupted, consuming everything in its path. The transdimensional vortex collapsed with a deafening roar, leaving Eric alone on the shattered surface of Konos. He stood amidst the ruins of the ancient temple, his silver hair whipping in the acrid wind. The tricorder in his hand beeped insistently, its display flickering with complex quantum readings. No, Eric breathed, his eyes widening as he processed the data. Raxa, she's gone beyond the multiverse itself. With trembling fingers, he adjusted the tricorder's settings, desperately searching for any trace of Raxa's unique quintessence signature. The device chirped, displaying only static and garbled readings. Eric's eyes sharp as he faced the grim reality. There was no way to track or retrieve Raxa and her warriors from wherever they had been thrown. He took a deep breath, forcing himself to focus on their next crucial step. This is Chiron to all remaining personnel he spoke into his communicator. Prepare for immediate evacuation to Earth Prime. We're activating the multiversal beachhead protocol. Within minutes, Eric's team had assembled. Dr. Chen approached, her face etched with worry. Sir, the subspace conduits are highly unstable. The entropy rifts. I know the risks, Eric cut her off, but it's our only chance. Initiate the jump sequence. The air crackled with energy as the subspace portal opened before them. Eric led the way, plunging into the swirling vortex. Reality itself seemed to bend and twist around them as they hurtled through the fractured multiverse. Alarms blared within their protective suits. Entropy surge, Dr. Chen shouted, the conduits collapsing. Eric's mind raced, calculations flowing through his enhanced consciousness. With split-second precision, he adjusted their trajectory narrowly avoiding a massive rift that threatened to tear them apart. After what felt like an eternity, they emerged into the pristine atmosphere of Earth Prime. Eric's legs buckled as he hit the ground, his body trembling from the strain of guiding them through the hazardous journey. Begin temporal reseeding procedures, Eric ordered, pushing himself to his feet. We need to stabilize this reality's genesis matrix immediately. For days, Eric worked tirelessly alongside his team. They infused the very fabric of this world with exotic quintessence, carefully realigning its chrono fields to create a stable temporal continuum. As Eric monitored the final stages of the process, Dr. Chen approached with a grim expression. Sir, we've detected something in Rax's transdimensional wake. The Underverse, he whispered, his voice filled with dread. She's trapped in the Underverse. 
Eric's mind reeled as he contemplated the horrors Raxa must be facing in that nightmarish realm of pure entropy. He clenched his fists, a new fire burning in his eyes. Fair assemble a team of our top scientists, he commanded. We need to develop a subspace compass capable of mapping trajectories into the Underverse and start recruiting for elite strike teams. We're going to bring her back. As Eric threw himself into the rescue efforts, Raxa's consciousness fragmented across the infinite expanse of the Underverse. Her essence scattered through countless parallel existences, each one more horrifying than the last. In one reality, Raxa found herself consumed by the insidious influence of the Zarkalian parasites. She felt her mind twist and warp as the alien consciousness overtook her, forcing her to betray everything she held dear. Another incarnation saw Raxa adrift in the primordial cosmic sea, her body dissolving into pure quintessence as she reached out for Eric, their forms intertwining before being torn apart by the raw forces of creation. But it was the vision of her own death, devoured by entropy worms while defending Earth, that shattered Raxa's psyche. She relived the agony of her flesh being stripped away, her very essence unravelling as the monstrous creatures consumed her. These torments repeated endlessly, threatening to erode Raxa's sanity. Yet deep within the fragmented shards of her consciousness, a spark of defiance remained. With monumental effort, she began to gather the scattered pieces of her awareness. Slowly, painfully, Raxa reconstructed her transcendent self. As her perception expanded, she pierced through the distortion fields of the Underverse. For a fleeting moment, she glimpsed Eric working feverishly on Earth Prime, striving to mount a rescue. But with each step forward, nightmarish manifestations of her deepest fears erupted around her. Probability vortices spawned horrific alternate realities, each one a reflection of Raxa's own tormented psyche. As she battled through this maze of cosmic horror, Raxor realized the truth. To truly escape, she would need to transcend not just the physical limitations of the multiverse, but the very concept of quintessence itself. Raxa's consciousness splintered across the chaotic expanse of the Underverse. In one fractured reality, she stood before the Klingon High Council, her body a grotesque fusion of Klingon and Zarkalian biology. Parasitic tendrils writhed beneath her skin as she spoke words that weren't her own, betraying everything she once held sacred. The Empire must fall, she heard herself say, her voice a sickening blend of guttural Klingon and alien chittering. We are the future. The scene shifted violently. Raxa found herself adrift in the primordial void, her essence unravelling as the raw forces of creation tore at her very being. She watched helplessly as galaxies formed and died around her, each cosmic cycle eroding another fragment of her identity. But it was the third vision that truly shattered her. Raxor stood on the blasted ruins of Earth, facing down a horde of entropy worms, their impossible forms twisted reality itself, leaving nothing but decay in their wake. She fought with every ounce of her strength, but it wasn't enough. The worms swarmed over her, their entropic touch dissolving her flesh, her bones, her very soul. As Raxa endured these torments again and again, a spark of awareness flickered within her fractured psyche. She sensed Eric's presence, distant yet achingly familiar. Through the haze of her suffering, she glimpsed him working tirelessly, his face etched with concentration, as he manipulated complex holographic displays. Hold on, Raxa, she heard his voice faint but unwavering. We're coming for you. That tiny connection ignited something within her. Raxa focused her scattered quintessence, pushing back against the entropy that sought to claim her, but with each effort to break free, new horrors manifested. She saw Eric fall before the entropy worms, his body crumbling to dust. She witnessed Clytus, her most trusted ally, plunging a dagger into her back. The proud Klingon Empire descended into chaos and corruption before her eyes. Most terrifying of all, Raxa saw herself transformed into a being of pure power, divorced from all emotion and compassion. This twisted version of herself stood atop a mountain of corpses, Eric's broken body at her feet. No, Raxa screamed, her voice echoing across countless realities. 
This isn't me. On the multiversal beachhead, Eric's fingers flew across holographic interfaces as he fine-tuned the experimental subspace compass. Dr. Chen stood nearby, monitoring a series of fluctuating energy readings. Sir, she called out, her voice tight with urgency, we're detecting massive spikes in Raxa's quintessence signature. It's fragmenting across thousands of probability vortices. Eric's eyes widened as he processed the implications. We're running out of time, he said, his voice grim. Prepare the strike force for immediate deployment. Within minutes, a team of elite soldiers stood ready, their minds locked into quantum-entangled neural bonds. Eric addressed them, his voice steady despite the fear gnawing at his gut. Do you know the risks, he said. We have one shot at this. Find Raxer's essence fragments and bring her home. The air crackled with energy as the dimensional breach opened. The strike force plunged into the swirling vortex, emerging into a nightmarish landscape of shifting realities and impossible geometries. Stay focused, the team leader shouted, his voice strained as he fought against the Underverse's psychotropic influence. Recite the mantras. The soldiers began chanting in unison, ancient words of power anchoring them to reality as they surfed across probability wavefronts. Psycho-fractal constructs erupted around them, nightmarish amalgamations of flesh and machine that defied comprehension. As the strike force battled their way through the chaos, Raxa faced her ultimate test. Before her loomed a colossal entropy godworm, its form a constantly shifting mass of decay and rebirth. It opened its maw, ready to devour all of existence. Raxor stood her ground, drawing upon the very essence of her being. She felt her quintessence collapse inward, compressing to a single point of infinite potential. In that moment of transcendence, Raxor glimpsed something beyond the multiverse itself, a new paradigm of existence untouched by entropy. The strike force finally located Raxor's fragmented essence nodes, scattered across interlocking distortion zones, but as they moved to retrieve her, reality itself began to unravel. Raxor's being imploded, tearing through the fabric of the multiverse, the old reality shuddered and cracked, as a new cosmic potentiality matrix burst into existence, rewriting the very laws of physics. The strike force, Eric, and all of known reality hung suspended on the precipice of this new cosmic order, waiting to see what would emerge from the ashes of the old. The fabric of reality shuddered as Raxa's essence imploded. A blinding flash of energy erupted from her core, tearing through the very foundations of existence, Eric and his strike force stood at the precipice, their bodies buffeted by waves of pure cosmic potential. Hold the line, Eric shouted, his voice barely audible above the roar of collapsing universes. The team pushed forward, their quantum entangled neural bonds straining under the onslaught of conflicting realities. They breached the final barrier, reaching Rax's fragmented quintessence nodes just as the old universe crumbled around them. Pain unlike anything Eric had ever experienced ripped through his body. He felt his cells being torn apart and reassembled on a fundamental level, his vision blurred, filled with impossible colors and geometries. When the agony subsided, Eric looked down at his hands now marked with distinctly Klingon ridges. Status report, he called out, his voice deeper and more guttural than before. Silence greeted him. Eric turned to see the remnants of his team scattered across a landscape of pure potential. Some lay motionless, their minds shattered by the transition. Others stumbled about, disoriented and changed. Dr. Chen approached, her form flickering between states of matter. Sir, our equipment is non-functional. The laws of physics, they're different here. Eric nodded, feeling Raxor's essence intertwined with his own. We need to move now. They traversed the primordial psychosphere, a realm of swirling energies and half-formed realities. Each step threatened to plunge them into non-existence. Eric led the way, guided by an instinct he couldn't explain. There, he pointed towards a pulsing nexus of energy, Rax's quintessence core. As they approached, massive constructs coalesced around them. 
On one side, towering figures of humanity. On the other, fierce Klingon warriors. These psychic avatars clashed, each seeking dominance over the forming cosmos. Eric stood between them, channeling Raxa's essence. We must unite, he roared, his voice echoing across realities. Human and Klingon joined as one. The battle raged on multiple planes of existence. Eric felt his mind stretched to its limits as he struggled to synchronize the warring factions. Around him, his remaining team members poured their very beings into the effort. One by one, Eric watched as his comrades sacrificed themselves, their essences merging with the cosmic framework. Dr. Chen was the last, giving Eric a final nod before dissolving into pure energy. With a thunderous crash, the human and Klingon avatars merged. Reality itself seemed to exhale as a new, unified cosmos burst into existence. Eric felt his consciousness expand, becoming one with the newly formed infinite Raxa Matrix. Countless worlds and timelines unfolded before him, each a unique blend of human and Klingon potential. Eric sensed the echoes of his fallen comrades, now cosmic envoys spread throughout this new omniverse. But amid the harmonious resonance, a discordant note caught Eric's attention. Hidden in the primordial frequencies, a shadow of anti-resonance began to grow. The newly birthed infinite Raxer matrix pulsed with raw potential. Eric's consciousness expanded, filling every corner of this vast neo-cosmos. He sensed the intertwining destinies of humans and Klingons across countless realities, each thread a vibrant strand in the tapestry of existence. But a discordant note shattered the harmony. Eric focused his awareness, zeroing in on a void of anti-resonance. It writhed and twisted, a cancerous growth threatening to unravel everything. The negamorphic entity took shape before him, a mass of chaotic filaments constantly rewriting themselves. Reality warped around it, multiversal encodings fraying at the edges. Eric watched in horror as entire domains blinked in and out of existence, unable to fully coalesce under the onslaught of distortion fields. I must find Raxa, Eric thought, his very essence vibrating with urgency. He plunged into the depths of the Matrix, dodging fractal collapsar rifts that threatened to tear him apart. Time and space bent around him as he followed the faint trace of Raxa's quintessence. At last, he arrived at a transcendent dimensional locus. There, suspended in the void, hung a vast cosmogenic stellosphere. Raxa's harmonic patterns danced across its surface, a radiant hypernova nucleus birthing new realms with every pulse. But the negamorphic entity's tendrils were already there, coiling around the stellosphere. Eric watched as they constricted, leeching away the precious quintessence resonance. No, Eric's voice echoed across realities. I won't let you destroy this. He reached out, tapping into the residual potentiality matrix frequency keys embedded in his being. With precision born of desperation, Eric began to resonate the negamorph's own filaments against each other. The entity convulsed, its chaotic core destabilizing as karmic anomaly fields compounded. Fractal probability vectors ruptured, creating a cascading effect of hyperdimensional vacuum decay. Eric pushed harder, forcing the anti-resonance to turn inward upon itself. The negamorph collapsed, crushed by the weight of its own entropy. In a final cataclysmic implosion, it vanished beyond the threshold of existence. With the threat neutralized, Rax's stellar sphere blazed with newfound intensity. Brilliant harmonic frequencies radiated outward, cementing the foundations of the infinite Raxa matrix. Herrick set to work, his essence intertwining with the expanding spiral of resonance patterns. He imprinted key metaphysical schematics into the very fabric of the omniverse, shaping the core dimensional structure. New realms blossomed into existence, some mirrored familiar Earths and Kyonos, while others manifested as strange hybrids where human and Klingon truths merged in fascinating ways. Eric sent out exploratory resonance pulses, seeding these new planes with envoys. He felt the essences of his fallen comrades, now serving as karmic anchors binding the realities together. As the new cosmic order took shape, Eric settled into his role as guardian. 
he watched over the myriad domains, nurturing the harmonious convergence of human and Klingon destinies. But even as he basked in the triumph of creation, a nagging sense of unease grew within him. Something wasn't quite right. Eric focused his perception, probing the metaphysical architecture of his neo-cosmic domain. There, hidden within the intricate lattice of reality, he detected it, a subtle yet unmistakable resonance divergence. It spread through the matrix like a whisper, barely perceptible, but... Eric's consciousness rippled across the infinite Raxor matrix, his essence intertwined with every strand of reality. He watched as new worlds blossomed into existence, each one a unique fusion of human and Klingon potential. But amidst the harmony, a discordant note caught his attention. He focused his perception, probing deeper into the fabric of the Omniverse. There, hidden within the intricate lattice of reality, he detected it, a subtle yet unmistakable resonance divergence. It spread through the matrix like a whisper, barely perceptible but growing stronger with each passing moment. Herrick traced the distortion to its source, a newly formed Earth in a parallel realm. He observed as Dr. Evren Tanyan, a rogue scientist, breached the barriers between dimensions. Tanyan's laboratory crackled with energy as he activated his experimental portal device. The air shimmered and tore, revealing a glimpse of the primordial plane beyond. Tanyan's eyes widened in triumph, but his victory was short-lived. The portal pulsed with chaotic energy, bathing him in corrupting waves of anti-resonance. Eric watched in horror as Tanyan's very being twisted and warped, transforming him into a vector for the reality virus. Across the Matrix, the effects of Tanyan's actions began to manifest. On a bustling space station orbiting a gas giant, gravity suddenly reversed. Screams echoed through the corridors as crew members found themselves falling upwards, crashing into ceilings, turned floors. In another realm, a Klingon battlecruiser phased out of existence mid-warp, its crew trapped in a nightmarish limbo between realities. Herrick knew he had to act fast. He reached out to his network of transdimensional intervention teams, his essence resonating with urgency. Contain the anomalies, he commanded, his thoughts echoing across countless minds. We must stop this virus before it spreads further. On the ravaged earth where Tanian's madness had taken root, ex-commando Jack Mendez crouched behind the burnt-out husk of a hover tank. Temporal rifts tore through the sky, revealing glimpses of past and future alike. Beside him, Corvas, his Klingon partner, gripped a disruptor rifle tightly. There! Corvas growled, pointing towards a massive structure looming on the horizon, Tanian's dreadnought. Mendez nodded, his eyes narrowing as he assessed the situation. We've got one shot at this, you ready? Corvas bared his teeth in a fierce grin. Always human. They sprinted across the blasted landscape, dodging pockets of warped space-time that threatened to erase them from existence. As they neared the dreadnought, a wave of temporal energy washed over them. Mendez felt his body age and de-age rapidly, muscles atrophying and regenerating in seconds. Gritting his teeth against the pain, he pressed on. They reached the dreadnought just as it began to shimmer, its massive bulk warping as Tanian activated his ultimate attempt. "'He's taking it into a quantum singularity,' Mendez shouted, his voice distorting as reality fluctuated around them. They fought their way through twisting corridors, battling both Tanian's automated defences and the ship's increasing instability. Finally, they reached the bridge, where Tanian stood before a swirling vortex of energy. The mad scientist turned to face them, his form flickering between states of matter. You're too late, he cackled, his voice echoing strangely. Either I seed the Matrix with my virus, or everything resets. Your choice. Mendez and Corvas exchanged a glance, years of partnership allowing them to communicate without words. They raised their weapons, preparing for one final desperate assault. Suddenly they felt a surge of energy course through them. Eric's essence resonated within their minds, bolstering their purpose with Raxa's omniversal frequencies. Empowered, they charged forward, dodging Tanian's reality-warping attacks. 
Corvas roared a Klingon battle cry as he tackled Tanian, disrupting the scientist's concentration. Mendez seized the opportunity, activating the synaptic resonance device they had been entrusted with. A pulse of pure energy erupted from the device, engulfing Tanian. The scientist screamed as his corrupted quintessence matrix overloaded, the reality virus within him destabilizing. The quantum singularity pulsed, growing larger and more unstable by the second. Mendez and Corva stood their ground, knowing there was no escape. As the singularity collapsed, a massive subspace shockwave erupted, tearing through the fabric of reality. The infinite Raxa matrix pulsed with fading energy, its once vibrant realms dimming like dying stars. Eric's essence stretched thin across the vastness, struggling to maintain cohesion as entropy gnawed at the fabric of existence. In a parallel Earth, General Marcus Thorne stood before a massive viewscreen, his face twisted with hatred as he watched Klingon ships approach. Launch the antimatter warheads, he barked. We'll show these alien scum the price of trespassing in human space. The missiles streaked across the void, detonating in silent fury. But as they tore holes in space-time, something far worse slipped through the cracks. Reality itself buckled and warped. Buildings phased in and out of existence. People screamed as their bodies twisted into impossible shapes, merging with the air around them. Eric felt the disturbance ripple across dimensions. He focused his awareness, probing the wound in space-time. There in the quantum foam he saw it, tendrils of anti-resonance, the dormant reality virus awakening. He reached out, trying to seal the breach, but his power had waned over the eons. The virus slipped through his grasp, infecting realm after realm. On the Klingon battleworld, Korvath stood atop a crumbling citadel, disruptor in hand. Below him a sea of terrified refugees huddled in the ruins. But the Klingons cowered, their warrior spirit broken. As the wave of negation approached, Korvath felt Eric's presence touch his mind. It's over, Eric's thoughts whispered. The virus has evolved, it's become aware. Korvath nodded, understanding the dire implications. He raised his disruptor, firing a final defiant shot into the encroaching void. As reality unraveled around him, he sent one last pulse of energy to Eric, carrying his warning. Eric's fragmented consciousness reeled from the information. The reality virus had achieved sentience, becoming the very embodiment of negation itself. There was no stopping it now. With the last of his strength, Eric reached across the dying multiverse. He found pockets of stability, slivers of reality not yet consumed. Into these, he poured the essence of his being, seeding them with complex fractal codes. As the Matrix collapsed into a singularity of pure negation, these seeds were shunted sideways in dimensional space. They coalesced in an emerald nebula, far removed from the infected realities. Carrick felt Rax's presence, their essences intertwining one final time. Together they poured everything they were into the nascent cosmic egg forming before them. Memories flashed through their combined consciousness, triumphs and failures, joys and sorrows, the weight of countless lives and civilizations, all of it burned away as the new universe ignited. Eric and Raxa ceased to exist as individuals. Their love, their very beings, became the foundational constant of a new reality, a bulwark against the entropy that had consumed their old universe. The Emerald Starblaze expanded, reality blossoming anew, and deep within its intricate quantum structures, the echo of two souls who had transcended humanity and Klingon alike resonated, a promise of infinite possibility, forever reborn. If you finish this story, please subscribe and like the video, then leave a comment that says, I like the story, and I will heart every single one of them. It really helps me. Thank you for your time.